Last call. It's now time for member statements. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This year marks the 118th anniversary of the Federated Women's Institute of Ontario. It marks 118 years since Adelaide Hoodless first began her campaign for domestic science education, inspire, inspired by the tragic death of her 14-month-old son. And 118 years since Erlen Lee, a local farmer, saw Hoodless's vision and with his wife supported the foundation of the Women's Institute. It was because of Hoodless's tireless efforts and vision for reform that domestic science and sewing were first added to the school curriculum. Today, the Federated Women's Institute has over 3,500 members in 290 branches across Ontario. I know through my very good friend Donna Jeb, who serves as president of the Women's Institute for Simcoe County and has been a member of that branch for over 30 years, that this organization has become much more than just about improving the homemaking skills of women. While still firmly entrenched in its beginnings, today Women's Institute uh, as well runs education and support programs and services, offers, offers personal growth opportunities, health and community wellness projects, and engages in government lobbying. In my riding, the Women's Institute sponsors two scholarships each year awarded to students pursuing post-secondary education who are active volunteers in the community. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate the Federated Women's Institutes of Ontario on the excellent work that they have done and on the many things they have achieved. I look forward to seeing the great things that the Institute will accomplish in the next 118 years and being a part of their growing success. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Timmins, James Bay. Thank you, Speaker. More and more people are waking up every day and realizing they're being gouged by the gas companies in this province as they are across this country. How do you explain that the price of the barrel has dropped to about $50 a barrel, and yet the price of gas keeps on increasing? Currently in Timmins, the price of gas is $1.14 a litre. We were paying $1.14 a litre when the price of gas was $80 a barrel. What gives? What gives is gas companies are gouging the public. And we as legislators have a responsibility in order to protect consumers. If these gas companies are not prepared to do what is right and to make sure that their price of gas at the pump properly reflects the price of the barrel, then it is up to the province because we are the regulators of energy, not the federal government. They deal with the competition issue. We deal with the regulation issue. The province should do what New Democrats have said for a long time and do what we do with natural gas, do what we do with electricity, do what we do with a box of beer. If you can buy a box of beer in Cornwall and pay the same price up in Fort Francis, certainly to God, we can find a way to make sure that the price of gas in this province reflects the true price of the barrel, allowing companies to make a profit without gouging the pockets of drivers in this province. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. As I've said in this House on several occasions, my riding of Cambridge is built on a foundation of manufacturing, and I rise today to welcome a new manufacturing partner to my community. Chances are that if you're taking off or landing on a plane in Ontario, that plane's landing gear or part of it was manufactured in my community of Cambridge. Last Thursday, aerospace manufacturing in Cambridge grew once again as I was in attendance at the inauguration of AeroDevTech's new Cambridge manufacturing facility, along with the Minister for Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. This new facility was built to accommodate a major new contract awarded by Boeing to supply complete landing gear systems for several Boeing aircraft. This state-of-the-art facility will result in the creation of 40 new, highly skilled jobs and represents a total investment of approximately $54 million, including $7 million of support from the province of Ontario. During our tour, I noted that there was one machine that uses such specialized skills that only about a dozen people worldwide are qualified to operate it. I'm proud of our government that's taking a proactive role in helping ambitious companies to grow and create jobs in Cambridge. Speaker, I'm delighted to work and welcome with welcome Aru DevTech to Cambridge's business community. They join Cambridge's diversified economy and its growing technology and advanced manufacturing sector. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Member Thank you. 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 Thank
I uh, stand today to pay tribute to one of the most respected community builders in my riding, Speaker, uh, Mr. Bruce Goulet. Bruce served as North Bay's mayor from 1971 to 1973. Before becoming mayor, he served as an alderman and deputy mayor. I am privileged to be able to call him uh, a mentor and my friend. Uh, now 92 years of age, Bruce was recently one of the 50 Canadians recognized for their contributions to civic life uh, and duty in our country. As part of our country's special celebration of the 50th anniversary of Canada's flag, Bruce was presented with a special Canadian flag on behalf of Prime Minister Harper by our Member of Parliament, uh, Jay Aspen, at a ceremony last week that I was privileged to attend. I believe Bruce spoke for all of us in attendance when he said, if there was a city within Ontario that embodies the best in citizenship and public service, it would be North Bay. Speaker, I couldn't agree more. On behalf of the residents of Nipissing, I want to say to Bruce, thank you for your years of dedication and commitment to North Bay, my friend, and for your steadfast leadership within our community. Thank you for everything, Bruce. Thank you. Speaker, I rise today to acknowledge the worldwide event of International Women's Day on Sunday, May, March 8th. As we know, International Women's Day is our, our opportunity to celebrate the progress and achievements in women's economic, political and social equality. It is vital that we celebrate our achievements while continuing to work towards equity for all women around the world. For my part, I am proud of the strides New Democrats have made under the leadership of Andrea Horvath in promoting and electing women candidates. The NDP has the highest percentage of women elected out of any political party at 51 per cent, and that is an accomplishment that we can celebrate. However, we must balance the celebration of our achievements against the significant obstacles that, ha that still remain in almost every country, even prosperous countries like Canada. Here at home, we see the persistence of violence against women, <coughs> lack of pay equity, and the underrepresentation of women, uh, women in positions of decision-making and leadership, all of which demand our reflection. And around the world, women are still facing enormous challenges with poverty, health, economic independence, education, and human rights. If our moral imperative does not compel you to, ac to action then, perhaps economic indicators can. It is widely recognized that women have the potential to be the engine of economic and development success, and now is the time to take action. This March 8th, I encourage all members of this House to celebrate International Women's Day and to reflect their own commitment to equality of all women. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statement, the member from Newmarket, Aurora. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to stand in the House today uh, to represent the great riding of Newmarket Aurora to bring awareness uh, to an event happening in uh, York Region. On the evening of March 5th, I'm participating in the second annual 360 experience. This will give me and, other 50, and 50 other community leaders an opportunity to spend a night in the cold to experience just a bit what homeless youth face every night in York Region. The number of homeless youth in York Region is staggering. An estimated 300 youth have, on any given night, no safe place to lay their heads. They are homeless. For over 25 years, 360 Kids has given the youth of York Region the opportunity to move from the street to homeless shelters while offering counselling, positive mentorship programs and employment opportunities. Mr. Speaker, the name 360 Kids highlights the approach the 25-year-old organization takes to assist at-risk youth. It recognizes these youth need a wide range of supports to help them rebuild their lives. I want to congratulate uh, 360 Kids on exceeding their fundraising goal of 50,000. The last time I checked their website, they, they had hit 65,000 and were still growing. Mr. Speaker, homelessness, especially youth homelessness, is an issue near and dear to my heart. I'm participating in this event to help the association and to raise awareness for youth homelessness in York Region. One day it will be eradicated. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The actions of this Liberal government are threatening health care services in the Quinney region. Today, Quinney Healthcare, which operates hospitals in Belleville, Trenton, Picton, and Bancroft, announced plans to eliminate its $8.5 million funding gap. 
The reduction forced by this Liberal government will result in the axe falling on 10 per cent of the nurses at Quinty Healthcare Hospitals. Those 58 nurses or so were responsible for 88,000 hours of nursing care at our local hospitals. The reason given for these cuts is the government and Quinty Healthcare have said they are moving toward an interprofessional staffing model. The government's also said that it's moving more services back into the community, Mr. Speaker, except the numbers don't back that up either. A spokesperson for the nurses at Hastings Manor and other long-term care facilities in the area says these facilities are understaffed, and the government has said don't expect any more money. Nursing advocates have stated that home care services in our community can't be delivered in a timely manner. Patients in Quinney deserve proper health care services, not nursing cuts without a home care safety net, not understaffed hospital floors. That's what happens when you blow billions of dollars on things that aren't priorities. It's clear that more money needs to be invested in frontline health care providers, but the Liberal government continues to invest in bloated bureaucracies and not tackle the big issue, which is the need to streamline administration. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Speaker. The member from Durham. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. In December, I had the pleasure of meeting two very passionate individuals who hail from my riding of Durham, and they brought to my attention a very important cause and a very important issue. These representatives from Epilepsy Durham region are part of a, of a very small team who are doing very big work. I wanted to rise to bring to, to the attention of this House their effort to showcase, to showcase March as National Epilepsy Awareness Month. Epilepsy Awareness Month is an opportunity to acknowledge the one in 100 Canadians who are affected by epilepsy and the more than 100,000 Ontarians who have with this condition. They will be standing in solidarity throughout the month as well as on March 26th when I encourage everyone, both constituents and members of this House, to wear purple to mark Purple Day, a national day of action for epilepsy. Together we can be more conscious of the condition and help to end the misconception around it. I am proud to see such a passion for such a cause in my riding. I am proud. Epilepsy Durham will be ho hosting many events throughout the month, such as the Purple Pancake Breakfast two weeks ago in Bowmanville. I want to thank Epilepsy Durham, Durham for their hard work and encourage everyone to go to the website epilepsydurham.com to learn more and, and to get involved. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa only up. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker. I was proud to be in attendance of the Orleans Chamber of Commerce 13th, 13th, 30th, 30th, no, 13th Annual Business Excellent Awards. We had 13 key awards winners who I have taken the time to congratulate individually. There were many wonderful finalists, and I want to express my gratitude to all local businesses for their hard work in our community. Small businesses are the lifeblood of Orleans. I can say that as a former business owner, the work that is done by the Chamber of Commerce in Orléans is extremely vital to, the, to foster entrepreneurship and economic growth in our communities. I'm always very proud to celebrate the exit of local companies and their initiatives. For a dynamic and innovative business climate in Orleans to help them continue thriving. I have to take this opportunity to wish all the best of success to the former executive director, Jamie Kwan, as she moves on to a new opportunity and to welcome the new executive director, Mr. Dina Epal. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's